And this is Mike. Uh, since his sickle broke, he's resorted to cutting the grass by hand with a butcher knife. He's doing a pretty good job. Making a pretty decent sized pile. I already moved some of it the past couple days, and I do help him, but I am the cameraman here too. Well, my weed whacker kind of broke yesterday. Mike was swinging it and he snapped it. Tried taping it a couple times here, but it's not really holding. So, I'll show you how I think. I'm nearly done. Hey, I used what I had to finish. This is a pretty cypress tree. There's 12 of them here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, thanks to Paulo, we have a nice fairway now. He's gonna come back next week and uh, do some more. And I gave him $10. So, helps pay his gas and now it's really nice. Today is May 8th, 2013. Francis W. May's 120th birthday. Birthday, Francis. Getting the grass cut down by some professionals. Today is May 10th, 2013. This is our almost totally finished. Well, it basically is finished. Just needs upkeep, grass cutting. Like this hole out here. The danger zone. Let's enter in and see what I did. I did this all myself back here. And first what I did is I took the weed whacker. Not the electric kind, the one you swing like a golf club and chop through thick brush like you see on these sides and got rid of most of it took me a few weeks to do that and then I just went over today and mowed down the higher areas that had already grown back with the rain and the sunshine of Florida here in the spring 2013 as you can see, got some nice contour around here. All these are blackberry bushes with the flowers on them, and they're edible. I, one of the neighbors says they're fantastic eating, and there's bushels and bushels of them all over here in this field. 
Yeah, I got some nice landscaping around here. This nice tree. And uh, I cut this area yesterday. This was all, well, yesterday and the day before. This was all pickers, like old, dead uh, blackberry bushes, thorns on them. And I went all the way up to this tree. And here's the hole over here. I'm gonna have to move the hole back there. This way we can make two holes, one over here and one over there. But this is about as far as I could go with this because the remainder of this property back there is owned by Swift Mud of Florida, Southwest Land Management or something of Florida. And it's supposed to be left for the wildlife. But anyways, I like the contour of how I did it. And then uh, here's 13 cypress trees over here. These are gorgeous. Starting from over here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. For 2013. And I learned the other day that they were planted about ten years ago or so. This one's pretty big here. Beautiful. They're kind of like in swamps in Florida, where they particularly grow. But they're here. And it's another nice maple tree over here. But I think it's pretty nice. I like it. Thank God. Magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Presented as a public service by Standard Oil Company. became the Cinderella champion of the U.S. Open, although veteran Ben Hogan seemed a certain winner on the final green of regulation play. The gallery, seeing his putt drop, acclaimed Hogan as the first five-time Open champion in golf history. Only the little-known Fleck had a chance, and a slim one at that, of tying Hogan as his approach shot hit the green on the last hole. Fame and fortune ride on Fleck's crucial putt. With an amazing closing surge, Fleck had tied the great Hogan. In the climactic playoff, the nerveless Fleck continued to amaze the gallery with his putting magic. On the final pressure-packed hole, Fleck, who never had a lesson in his life, held a shaky one-stroke lead as, with remarkable accuracy, he dropped his approach shot on the green. Suddenly, Hogan's cause was hopeless as he hit up. Two wasted shots in the rough had shaken from his grip the title that once seemed so secure. But finishing the round like a true champion, Hogan rolled in an incredible 30-foot putt.
hoping that two putts would give him the title, Fleck carefully stroked his ball up close to the cup. Climaxing one of golf's most astounding upsets, Fleck clinched his victory. Summer's brightest sports star, Jack Fleck. Then Hogan tees off in a desperate effort to pull ahead of Byron Nelson in the $13,000 Los Angeles Open Golf Tournament, attended by a record crowd of 30,000. Dutch Harrison winds up a long one that just misses, coming in seven strokes behind the winner. Jimmy Demerit tries a 30-footer that is perfect. Lord Byron, after cracking the outgoing nine in a par 35, can afford to blow one. His three-stroke lead is increased to five by the time he sinks that winning putt. $2,666 in victory bonds, not to mention the 67 cents are the victor's award, but top prize is for free from this charming golf enthusiast. Ken Venturi, the amateur, tees off at Augusta, four strokes up on his nearest rival, Kerry Middlecoff, defending champ in the Masters Tournament. No amateur has ever won. Eight strokes behind Venturi and going into the final round is Jack Burt, Jr., personable veteran of the pro circuit. The gallery is rooting for the young San Francisco amateur, but gives the defending champ a hand when Kerry sinks one. But the big story is Venturi's collapse and Burke's rally, climaxed by this terrific shot out of the trap on the final hole. A little English puts him only four feet from the cup. Ken Venturi captured the hearts of all who followed his fortunes, but Jack Burke Jr. holds out one stroke up to win the title and $6,000. Partner Mike Suchak is first to hail the new master of the masters. He wears the green coat of victory as Bobby Jones offers congratulations. A pro is still champ. Gallery at the Aronimink Golf Club near Philadelphia sees the PGA Jinx work against Arnold Palmer, fresh from his British Open win. He has never won the PGA, and today rivals like Bob Golby run far ahead. Golby is hot on the fourth and final round, and the crowd sees him duel down to the final hole with Gary Player, the South African whiz kid. In this 44th professional golfer's scramble, the crowd is treated to a brand of super golf, along with some heartbreakers. When George Bayer misses a two-footer on the 18th, he has to settle with a tie for third place. There's high drama on the 18th green, as Player eases a 35-footer to within two feet of the cup. That gives him a short one for a par four, and the match, unless Bob Goldby could have come up with a birdie from 25 feet out. He's close, but he stays one stroke behind. Then the $13,000 putt that makes Player the first non-resident to win this title. He appears overwhelmed as he lifts the ball from the cup. Gary Player, with his card of 278, takes the title by one stroke. A storybook finish. Nine years ago, little Ben Hogan, teeing off in the Masters Tournament at Augusta, set his sights on one of professional golf's greatest prizes. But Ben seems jinxed never to take the coveted Masters as he loses a heartbreaking playoff against a near record 280 score by Byron Nelson. Hogan's career has seemed at its peak with his 1948 PGA victory over Mike Ternisa. Soon afterward, Hogan was almost fatally injured in an automobile accident. The brilliant skill with which he made shots like this over Ternisa's stymie seemed lost to golf forever. In the U.S. Open at Ardmore, Pennsylvania, a year following his accident, although doctors had predicted he would never walk again, Hogan gains a triple tie for first, outplaying a field of golfing's greatest. Now, with iron control, Hogan seeks the final playoff putt to win from Lloyd Mangum and George Fazio. Hogan's comeback is successful. And is Mrs. Hogan proud of the new U.S. Open champion? Hogan now has his eye on the Masters, the only major U.S. tournament he has never won. 
Starting out in the last round of the 1951 Masters, one stroke behind Ski Regal and Sammy Sneed, Hogan thrills the crowd of 10,000 with powerful shots and brilliant putting. Meantime, Regal has come in with a 282. The crowd is tense. Can Hogan beat Regal? He has only to sink the next putt to win. And sink it he does for a winning 280. One stroke over the record. As Regal watches, Hogan is congratulated by Bobby Jones as he adds the Masters crown to a brilliant golf career.